Hello, everybody. My name is Anthony Strayhorn. I'm a personal life coach delving into the world of personal transformation. And I really love to help people expound their awareness around clarity, conviction, and courage. Catch me on the Jesse T Show, and let's get into it. Anthony, my brother, what is going on this Monday morning, man? Ah, new day, a new experience, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What, what was good about your weekend, man? What'd you get into this weekend? Well, I actually got some, I had some much needed rest. Um, you know, I'm a father of a almost 11 month old and uh, <laughs> there were some moments where we needed to actually, you know, have some downtime and rest and, and chill. And so that was great. I did catch up with a cousin of mine I hadn't seen in like eight months. So that was great. And um, that was just, you know, time to just, you know, reconnect because we hadn't talked to each other in a while. And uh, like I said, rest and um, weekends are always great for me to reset, to really just like process everything and just really kind of like put everything out where I can see it and like, okay, figure out where things need to be shifted around and things need to be reallocated, you know, energy and time wise. So that's always, um, you know, a moment for me during the weekend. So that's how oh, I yeah. Dad life, man, being a dad at yeah. any age is, 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 is intense, especially, I know you're an involved dad and I love it because I'm the same way, man. I see the pictures on social media. I see, I know your heart, you're, you're a very loving, caring, capable man. And, and, uh, you know, it's a lot, man. It's a lot to be, uh, always on, <laughs> yeah. always on, but, yeah. uh, you know, you and I connected and it was, it was serendipitous because we, there was other forces at, at play to, to plug us in. So when we connected, uh, I met you at an ecstatic dance. Mm -hmm. here, here in Atlanta, put on by the mighty, the powerful Scott, Scott Houston. And he is a beautiful soul doing a lot of beautiful work in the world. And I'm down there first time at this ecstatic dance. And I love ecstatic dance, but uh, I see this, this ripped, you know, God of a human being dancing around, having the time of his life, blowing a whistle. I'm like, this guy's the man, like this guy, <laughs> this guy's really cool. And I, I had a vision of you and I knew like, I kind of felt you. And then a couple days later, unbeknownst to me, unbeknownst to you, we're a part of this men's group, Global yep. Resources for Men on Facebook, which is really cool. And uh, Alicia plugged us in and she's like, y'all are in Atlanta. You should get to know each other. And I'm like, I want to get to know him. Like he's a guy I've seen dancing this ecstatic dance. This is really cool. So there were these kind of universal ties bringing us together. But man, it was beautiful to meet you. How long have you been into ecstatic dance? Talk about that a little bit. Oh, man. Well, that version since last summer when Scott started, started it, but I've been doing ecstatic dance for probably about four or five years. Wow. Yeah. And different other circles because other circles host ecstatic dances as well. So yeah, it, it's part of like, it's one of the things that I really go to for community and connection. And those are like core themes of my life. And I get a lot of like a release from it, you know, and there's a lot of like expression and it, it's great. I, I just love dancing. It's, it's such a, it's such a vulnerable, space to be in especially in the static dance where there is no form of dancing in the sense like you dance a certain way so i love that part of it this allows me to be just open and free yeah brother it's uh the body is such a great instrument of healing of connection of intuition uh yeah. there's innate knowledge that we have and a lot of it's in the body a lot of it, the body keeps the score good and bad you know if you're, you're abusing your body it's going to know if you're treating your body with health and wellness and love it's going to know and Yep. There's something powerful about movement, man. And, and there's, uh, there's these, these blue zones. Are you familiar with blue zones? Yeah. Around the world. Different yeah. Places. Yep. Yeah. And they all dance. They all like, that's one of the biggest things is like, there's community, there's art, there's, there's, <laughs> there's singing, there's dancing. And it's, there's a reason why. So for people that are listening or watching the, the blue zones are where the most centurions live, people that are hundred years or older, but they're living well. They're not just eking by on medicine and surgery. Like they are crushing it, like running around living yeah. life embodying yeah. having sex like just all this crazy stuff beautiful stuff the things we should be doing and yeah. it's because of the other stuff yes it's nutrition yes it's location yes it's like the environment all these different things but a lot of it they've they've distilled down to quality of life outside of those things dancing play sex arts so so what drew you because well i'm going to get into your story in a minute but what drew you because ecstatic dance is so fun what drew you into ecstatic dance and was it when you first got started how did you feel getting into it versus today Oh, wow. Well, like I said, so just to give you, I'm really into physicality from, you know, being a personal trainer to a runner to doing all kinds of physical things in the sense, like I do things to help um, express this sense of like, 
like zeal, zeal for life, the zeal, zeal for life and like excitement. And so anything that deals with like either running or jumping or flipping or, or just bouncing around, you know, it just, it helps, it helps to invoke this childlike spirit. And so dancing is one of those things. I remember when I was a younger, a young teenager, I used to go to the school dances and, and, and rec dances in my neighborhood. And it was just, I just had always had so much fun. It was just always a great time to just like, just be who you be, whoever you wanted to be in that moment. It was just like a free for all expression for yourself. And, you know, I just, I've always loved to travel too. And so I used to travel to this um, music conference. They called it a music conference in Miami. It's called um, a winter music conference. And it's a EDM slash house music oh, yeah. <laughs> um, on, on South beach. And so that was really where I got into the scene of like a lot of like dances, dances, like, and that just exploded from there. And so, you know, aesthetic dance and uh, also five rhythms, which is a very similar uh, expression or experience similar to aesthetic dance um, is where I also delved into as well. So it's communal dancing, you know, Jesse, it's the communal dancing experience that really just like, it just fuels me. It just, I feel like it's healing. And I feel like it just really helps to like boost our level of connection with one another, you know, because it's a bonding, it's bonding, you know, dancing, just like eating creates this sense of bonding with yes. one another. And so that's something I really just really big on in life all, all around in all areas of my life. Yeah, brother, it's, it's, it's a life well lived, you know, the relationships that we create, that we empower, that we believe in friends, family, coworkers, all, all across the spectrum, man. And, uh, you start finding your tribe and like-minded people. Like when I met you, I knew you were my person. Like you were someone who was into health and wellness. You're into family, you're into spirituality, like, and, and again, different experiences, different things, but there's a, there's that through line, that golden thread that ties us together. And, um, yeah. For, for the set and setting of, of this ecstatic dance where I met you, it's outside. It's in a, it, well, it's yeah. a place in a couple of different places, but like Candler park in Atlanta, where it's a grassy little patch of, you know, maybe a hundred yards or so. And it's kind of like a slight incline. So mm-hmm. Scott's down a little bit and he's, he's, he's blasting up love and light up the hill. Yeah. And uh, there's people of all different backgrounds, all different abilities. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's for people that are listening and watching ecstatic dance is just, for me, the way I've, I've learned it is it's like that whole cliche dance like nobody's watching. It's mm-hmm. a group of people dancing like nobody's watching and like yep. holding space for each other and not judging and not trying to be flirty unless it's invited, like any of that stuff. Right. And, and it's so powerful, man. And I'll tell you, my, my experience was way different. It was I always loved to dance, but I would do it when no one was watching. And okay. I always wanted to be expressive. And it took me, you know, until my mid thirties, I'll be 40 in December. It took me into my mid thirties to be able to stop giving a shit and like mm-hmm. just dance. And like, now I'm always dancing. Like I was just on a podcast before this one on mm-hmm. uh, as a guest. And the guy had like intro music and all this. And I'm over here, like bobbing my head. Like, this is great. Like, <laughs> I, I don't care who sees me. Like, so, so were you always where I'm going with this is where, were you always someone who was so expressive? Like, long hair don't care screw it or were you like cracked open along the way where you said screw it and like owned it like where were you with your creativity slash ability to be able to to, to embody it yeah you know i think it, it has it's come in waves it, it has come in different stages and waves in life and um you know i've always as a kid i was always just really like curious and like in a sense, rebellious in the sense like i, I would always be like <laughs> okay yeah i hear you telling me not to do something or be careful, or maybe reconsider, but I'm also like, but why? <laughs> you know, so that that function of logic was always like, always on the forefront of my mind, like, why? Because I always felt like when there's a why, there's like this willingness to like adventure yeah. and discover what's behind that, you know, like, and so that just, you know, opened me up to this idea, like, why not like live full out? Why leave any rock unturned, you know, just like this whole, like, just go for it, just go for it anyway, you know, and, you know, Jesse, I've seen and experienced meeting people who have told me, you know, man, don't, don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wow. wait when you have things that you know you can do now, or just the idea of putting stuff off, you know, that you can say you can do tomorrow or later down the road. If you can do those things today do it. Yep. 
powerful yeah. brother that 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 uh, curiosity that rebelness that need for connection i that's even deeper than than what i've known in terms of like where we're connected because i'm the same i'm the same. i crave connection meaningful connection i crave you know uh I am a rebel at heart, you know, even how I operate in business is, is, is super rebellious in a very regulated, stiff world. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting that we have those things in common. And, and I think that, you know, for people that who want to explore, like you said, man, time is finite. And, you know, the Stoics believed in memento mori, which meant, you know, know that you must die. And, and the reason why they believed that and carried that around as one of their core belief systems was, Live the shit out of today. And again, it's not always easy to be super present or mindful of, you know, really soaking every moment of the day. But if you have that as like an 80 20 kind of deal, like 80% of the time, you're really maximizing conversations. You're really being of service in any way you can be of service. You're really enjoying, you know, the food or the conversation and you're really present. Yeah. That's a, again, that's another secret for a life well lived. And I don't know about you, brother, but like it took me holding death in my hands a few times to get there, to get to that place of time is as cliche as it is. Time is a gift. Time is the present is a gift. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. only ever live in the present. Like we've experienced the past, but we can't go back. We're not sure of the future. We only have now. Yeah. And if you were going to die today, Anthony, like what would you wish you had done or said differently? Yeah. And I think that for me, that really sparked a huge shift in my perception of not giving a shit. Like I'm going to live my life the way I want to live it. I'm going to help and love as many people as I can and be helped and loved. And so that's another huge piece. Is that something that you were given as, as a lesson in life? Like, the, and, and what was that lesson that brought you to that, that viewpoint? Yeah. You know, that, that, that's another thing that I started to realize, you know, so I was in college studying engineering and I graduated with an engineering degree. And upon graduation, I went to go work in the corporate world for seven years. However, before I even graduated from college, I already knew that it was my, my second internship. I was like, I don't see myself spending more than 10 years in <laughs> I can't see it. I did seven years. And so, so it was, you know, three quarters of it. I just realized in that moment, I was like, this is not, this is not going to be sustainable for me in terms of what I want to do in my fullest um, purpose in life. Like I want to travel. I want to connect. I want to party places. I want to like learn different things. I want to eat foods from all different cultures. So I wanted to do all these things that I'm doing now in life that I'm still coming into in terms of like what I'm manifesting and attracting. And I just felt like this can't be life. We're not meant to be in a fucking office looking at a box all day long, nope. driving to a box office, our lunch box, you know, our lunch is in a box, the break room's a box, our cubicle's a box. <laughs> if you think about the shapes of which we put ourselves, the formatting of our life shows up in the box. Yep. Everywhere. We move in a box. We move in boxes. We go from one box to another. And so I just didn't like this, you know, and I'm not trying to be corny, boxed in life. Yep. You know, I wanted to just like, I wanted spontaneity. I wanted, I wanted variety. You know, those were needs that I was like, I got to have that. That's like, that's, that's it. That's like burning in my heart. I got to have those things. So like you said, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I never have wanted to live with this idea. Like I get down to, you know, get further down in my life. I'm like, I wish I could have, should have. Yes. I wish I could have, should have. Cause that breeds resentment, man. Yes. I did not want to live with that in my heart. Resentment, you know, wish I could have, should have. And that's, that's a tough space to be in, you know? Gary Vaynerchuk talked about that one time. Oh, yeah. He said, you know, he said, I've seen people, I've met people in hospitals. I've seen people who are on their deathbed saying, you know, I'm resentful for not experiencing this in life, not so asking powerful. this person, not going out when I say I was not traveling, not taking that job, not, not taking that leap. I'm like, that shit has to be, woo, brother. So you, you're giving me chills right now. It's, it's, and, and, <laughs> and I did hear Gary V say that a few years ago. And, I've said the same thing. Even recently when I was in Austin, I was on uh, CJ Finley's podcast, uh, the thrive podcast. And he's a great guy. I'll plug you in. Cause you're both health and wellness. You're both awakened. You're both conscious, all these beautiful things. And I talked about that specific thing. I was like, because of Gary V and people, you know, I come from a, 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 a relationship of a mom and dad that had relationships before me. So like my sisters are older, my aunts and uncles are older. So I started experiencing sickness and death through the lens of the viewer of other people really early on. And I had people saying they wish they could, should have, could have, would have. And then you mm -hmm. tie in a guy like Gary Vee, who's 
interestingly enough, even though he's not into like, as far as I could tell, like spirituality, plant medicines, any of that kind of stuff, he's just tapped in, man, like in, in a very raw, real way. And he talks about how his time he spent with those people saying they die with regret. And I said it the other day, I was like, I'm doing everything I can to not die with regret. That means showing up for myself, health and wellness and having those experiences of travel and, and the relationships and being there for my boys and being the best dad that I could be because I wasn't given that. But I also want to be like a, an open dad and a loving dad and a dad that talks about emotions and also a dad that you know, teaches his kids about X, Y, Z and all this different stuff. And, you know, when you die. When you get to the edge, and when you when it's time to transition from this world to you know whatever you believe in is next, mm-hmm. it's not going to be the job. It's not going to be the promotion. It's not going to be. There's none of that shit matters. It's just it's just a construct in the paradigm we have to play in. What matters is the time that you didn't spend with your kids, the travel you didn't go on, everything you just said, mm-hmm. and 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 that's such a powerful, powerful way to live. And and, and I'm wondering for you. How do you keep that top of mind? Does it just become so embedded in you that you're just living the shit out of every moment? Or is it like times you got to kind of give yourself a checkup from the neck of like, okay, I got to get back to it. How do you kind of keep yourself honest when it comes to that? Yeah, it's a juggle, man. It is a juggle. It's not easy. And, um, you know, I think the paradox is that it's not meant to be easy. I think once we realize like it's not going to be easy, you can find some sense of peace, like managing it the best way you have you, yes. you know you can and, and in the space that you're in i do think it, it 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 helps when you have a community you have a partner you have people around you that can help ground you when you feel um or there's when you're feeling off or you're off with things and in, in a loving way it's like okay hey i'm noticing this um this is a little bit different than what i've noticed before as far as patterns what do you think just bring it to your awareness so i think that helps because we all get off it's not that we don't get off it's how quickly do we get back on to recenter and stabilize and sustain ourselves so um you know just knowing what my values are in life what's important yeah. and what what universal principles are are like guiding me you know like for one of them one of my most universal principles is everything is energy so i'm mindful about where do I get the most energy from and how I can maximize that connection, whether yeah. that source is, whether it be a relationship, whether it be what I eat, where I work out, you know, or time spent with my, my family or friends. So it's about what do I, what do I want to weigh out? What's important? What's going to give me the maximum amount of um, yield or result based on what I, what I say I want to do for yes. on this day or this week or this month, you know? Like right now, very specifically, I'm focused very intently on being around a certain type of energy. So people who are very open to connecting in person, people who are very open and understanding that they create their life, not external things. Yes. And people who have an ownership that they are always creating their life each and every day. So that kind of profile of energy is what I'm choosing to be around very intentionally. Not to say I won't be around people at all who are not in that space. No judgments. It's just like, it's this energy, nothing yeah. personal. You know? That's another great, great paradigm to operate in. And, you know, I, I can sense, feel, and, and it's like blatant that you've done a lot of work to get here and you're continually, we're always continually doing the work. Yeah. So for you, who, what was the impetus, I guess? And, and, and what was your path like to, to start your journey? You know, the, whether it's a spiritual journey, health and wellness journey, it all ties together anyway. But like, what is it? Was there a teacher? Was there a conference? Was there an audio book, a podcast, something? And then how has it evolved since then? Like, so what does that journey and path look like for you to kind of get to the place where you are now? Wow. I would say the, I would say where I can pinpoint it is the summer of 2002. I was a sophomore in college and I was um, staying with a cousin of mine in the city where I was, um, doing an internship and he gave me a book on this uh this area of metaphysics it's called the Kabbalion and it sounds very similar to um to the Kabbalah or uh yep. which is a little different it's different but there actually there's some there's some parallels to those um and from there it just really gave me some awareness to some of the science beneath the science so metaphysics typically it, it stands for it translates to the science beyond the science so yeah. it's the it's what's it's the unseen that creates the scene you know and so from that book i 
I just really just had this like spark of like an awakening, you oh, know, yeah. and that was the summer of 2002. And then at the end of the summer of 2002, I went to a lecture that was being um, facilitated by this holistic health doctor. And he was just talking about at the time what was called, it wasn't even called plant-based, but he was just calling it like nutritional well-being. And he started talking about veganism or just, you know, eating raw food, eating all these um, alternative ways. And it just sparked this like, oh, like deep awakening, almost like Neo in the Matrix. Like, <laughs> and I was were open. Like, oh my gosh. It was, it was so profound, Jesse. It was really profound because that day changed everything. That was like, it just, it went like, oh no, it changed gears. It, it was already in gear from reading the Kabbalion. And then it just went a whole nother, a whole, to a whole nother gear. Yep. When I decided in that moment, it's like, I want to be vegan. And so that, it wasn't just about what I was eating. It was about every way in which I was seeing life, how nature connects with what I was doing in school and how myself and connecting with the rest of the world. And this, I just started seeing myself more into like the whole picture. <laughs> and it is, it, it, is, it is just evolved and changed. And, you know, I got, I left corporate in 2012. I started personal training that developed more into life coaching that was coupled with the personal training. And then I created a personal life coaching services um, separate from my wow. personal training. And that has, you know, continued to flower and blossom and, and, and really just connect even more to this whole vastness of it all. So Damn, and I've man. had a lot of mentors along the way too. a lot of mentors, a lot of teachers, a lot of people helping me, guiding me. Um, and I've been open to it. That's the thing. You know, I think it's what, what I would say. One thing about me is I've always been open to allowing people to share or impart your wisdom, because I do feel it takes a village to raise each other. No question. Not just the child. Well, the child, we are the child yes. of the universe. Yes. <laughs> and so we are constantly each one teach one, constantly yes. each one teach one. Even if we don't even consciously see, understand it. We always are. So we are experiential learning beings. And sure. um, if you're not awakened to even just presence if you'll you'll suggestively be implanted with thoughts and ideas that you don't know where they come from but you're, we're always learning we're always assessing we're always feeling and, and there's levels to that there's levels to being able to feel and all the way from shut off to being empathetic and beyond and different yeah. energies that flow everywhere and you know it's 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 a beautiful experience to have this they call it a human condition right like this human condition that we get to experience but you know it's not easy. A lot of times it's not where people are. And I feel like we're in, a, in, in an age of change and we are being, I don't want to say tested, but we're giving an opportunity to really rise above some of our darkness. And so like a lot of the things that we've been facing for the last, I mean, forever, but specifically the last 18 months with the pandemic, yeah. with COVID, with political issues, with you know, humanity issues, all this different stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I truly, and I, I want to get your take on this. I believe that it's, it's necessary for us to evolve into our next iteration. And there's this whole like way out there for people that might be hearing this for the first time or listening to this for the first time, but there's this like becoming like crystalline and like becoming like a next iteration of like love and light and beyond. And like, they, they, they wonder if this is what happened with the Mayans. Like they evolved so far that they just disappeared and became spirit and energy. And, and so what are your thoughts around that? What are your thoughts around the current state of the world in terms of the darkness being met with the light and where our next evolution might lead us? Yeah, oh, this is a juicy question. <laughs> I, mean, I know like, I can ask you this question. You're, you're well adept. You're the type of person that gets it. So I just wanted to get your perspective on it. Yeah, I, I think this is we're in a prime time right now to really just like this. We can we can face it and go forward or we can like see it and run from it. And whatever choice, there are always going to be outcomes, consequences. The question is, will you be at peace with whatever consequence or, or outcome that comes with it? And so I always feel like we find meaning when we do things that, that are on the other side of the fear that's in front of us. Like we, we, we get something out of, it's almost like 
And I posted a quote this morning. And I said that fear is always at its highest right before you make the choice. Wow. It's like the, it's like the 11th hour. It's yeah. always like that shaking. You're shaking right before you run out on that field, right before you go out on the court, right before you face the other opponent. And the metaphor is that you're facing yourself. You're facing the reflection of yourself and other, and other people's opposing views, different values, different religion, different everything, yeah. or whatever yeah. construct. And so right now in the world, we're facing ourselves in the, with the, in the reflections of other people. And really, we're still all one. It's just that our mind, which is where our ego lives, yes. where it harbors itself, always says there's you and them them versus us yes there's this there's this there's this dissonance there's this um separation and as as someone that i would say i already already understand i'm already spiritual just being in this existence i'm already spiritual so i don't need to try to be spiritual yes understand that we have a purpose there is a purpose in our mind to see things separately so that we can understand things in different in pieces or in in how they break down. However, and I also understand that at the same time, it's all oneness. It's all the same thing, you know? So I think it's important, especially as people like you and I, people who are looking into the darkness and the light of the world, that we see that it's all one. It's really no separation, but the light and dark are really one, one experience. It's just the way we relate to the experience. You know, the relationship between what what is light and dark yeah. it's really it's, it's just that's the that's the game changer that's the thing that makes what we feel you know physically in our body and how we move and how we behave i think it's just this is a prime opportunity right now for everybody to lean in there's an opportunity to lean into yeah. what's scaring you what is what is challenging what is not easy and like i said before lean into it with the community find your tribe so that's why when you when we were talking about static dance earlier with me, I intentionally, intentionally, and really make it a priority to come where my tribe is, where my yes. energy is, where my cauldron of people like me, <laughs> who like to dance, who like to bond, who like to connect, who like to hug, who like to discuss. Dis- yeah, <laughs> that is medicine. Yes. That is healing. And so to me, that 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 also sends a ripple. Every single Sunday that we hang out, that sends yes. a ripple of energy on our from us out and we wear that energy throughout the week and that is that's massive man that is huge and we don't even always see it because we don't we don't always realize the impact or the depth of our impact yes you know we don't realize we might be impacting somebody now in new zealand i know and and you might not know it until or someone in new zealand 10 years from now you know You know, and they come up to you like you know i used to watch scott houston on facebook 10 years ago and i was like what the fuck? Hell yeah. Crazy. Like, you know, I'll just say this last part. I have a, um, a cousin on my stepmother's side of family who said, uh, I, I just talked to her just casually about some of the coaching I do. And she was like, you know what? I don't need any testimonial because I already know I've been following you for a long time. I've realized, you know, the things that you've done in your life and the changes and all that thing. She was like, you know, just re- it is affirmed with me even more like someone's always watching. Yes. Someone's always watching, even if they're not consciously watching, yes. they're picking it up subconsciously you know that's such a powerful way to be and just to be yeah human being not human doing not human yeah. chasing human and again we, we we have divine masculine divine feminine and all of us guys and girls everywhere in between mm-hmm. and and the divine masculine is the the doer it's the creator it's it's the achiever it's the, the thing it's the always a process Divine, divine feminine is, is, is the, the beingness, the stillness, the openness, the, and, and we have all of that. Yeah. And I think that being aware of that, number one, is a start. And then number two, starting to embody it. And so I, uh, I went on a journey with my brother, Lane Ballone, and a couple other people too. And, and he and I do a lot of work together, travel a lot of places. And we specifically work with a lot of plant medicines, different kinds, different reasons, different situations. Mm-hmm. And so we worked with DMT. Uh, 5-MEO DMT back in August this year, 2021. And we went to Tulum, which is one of my favorite places. Uh, Tulum and Austin, Texas have become very important to me. They, they, they seem to be centers like vortexes of energy. Mm-hmm. And in Tulum, there was this beautiful journey 
very feminine, a lot of different things. And then, and then we had a five MEO DMT experience. And for those that don't know, five MEO DMT comes from a frog or well, can come from a frog. And what they do is the, the frog secretes essentially different kinds of chemicals and peptides on its back. And, you know, people talk about working in and with nature. There are people that can call frogs out of trees, get the frogs to come to them, take wow. the, 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 the goo essentially, and, and release the frogs back into nature and they work together. And, and, and these plant medicines and, and nature medicines have what I believe we talked about science behind the science. I believe things like psilocybin mushrooms, ayahuasca, San Pedro, 5-MEO DMT. I believe that they're tools given to us by creator, by source, by universe, and they are divine science. I truly believe this actually because they allow us to operate in another plane of existence that's just as real as this one. And it, and it allows us to bring information into this existence that maybe we wouldn't have had before. Yep. So what you were saying about being the change, really you were saying being the change you want to see in the world is what I was getting from what you were saying. And, 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 and it starts with you. And yeah. for me, going into that journey, I had two intentions. And for those people that have done plant medicines before, you know what that means. If not, it just means that you, you want to go in with something you, you wish to bring into your life or take away from your life. It could be pain. It could be trauma. It could be business, relationships, love. It could be healing, whatever. Whatever you feel called to bring in or take out of your life. Yeah. And for me, man, it was, I had the big intention and I walked in there and I talked to Ez, Ezria, powerful, beautiful brother who's, who's healed himself from like terminal cancer, testicular cancer. He, he tells a story, so it's okay for me to share, but he, uh, he used combo. I don't know if you know what combo is, is so powerful. He healed himself from cancer. He's helped other people. So like, there's so many things that are happening in the world right now that are coming to fruition. But anyway, long story short, my journey was, my, my intention was I want to heal the world. Mm -hmm. and not from a place of ego. Like I, I need to go out and change lives. It was just like, I want to see the suffering of the world go away. I want people to understand that there is healing out there in any different modality from ecstatic dance to plant medicine and everything in between and whatever you're called to do, do it. But for me, it was, I want to heal the world. And then the second intention right behind it was remove any blocks subconsciously or self-limiting beliefs I have so that I can actually do this work. Right. I go in, have you worked with DMT before? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I've done oh. five ayahuasca ceremonies. Oh my God. So, so, so the, the ayahuasca for those that are listening can be four to six hours of a hell of a journey, beautiful, insightful, incredible, hard, painful, whatever. Mm -hmm. DMT is like the 30 to 45 minute version of that. <laughs> and it's like, it's incredible. I won't, I won't spoil the journey, but basically for me, two things came up. At one point, I was in a full body orgasmic bliss state, and I blurted out, I said, it's a beautiful dance, meaning life's a beautiful dance and like just, just going through life. But the profound insight came towards the end, and I sat up, and I was like, I know the answer. What I was seeking was already within. And this is, this is so cliche. It's like the answers are always within. Yep. And for me, my, my, my medicine that I give back to the world is love. Like I have a giant heart. I've experienced a lot of pain and suffering so that I can relate to everybody that has pain and suffering, like all this shit. And I sat up, and I was like, love is the answer and loving yourself first, truly loving yourself first, then you can ripple effect that out to the world. Yep. I had this beautiful fucking peace, profound love for myself, like just moving forward. And it was like to change the world, you just got to change yourself. And you see these quotes elsewhere, mm -hmm. but that's how you change the world, man. And so, so I want to know, you know, you are in a couple different ways doing that. You are changing the world by changing yourself, you are affecting the lives of those closest to you, but then that branches out to eternity. Yeah. And you also said something, said something that was really profound that I don't want to miss was we're basically all the same. It's just, it's just, we're all, we're all the shared consciousness. We're all a shared version of each other. We're just experiencing it through a different lens, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And you alluded to this. Yes. So, so, so going to how you serve your medicine, so to speak, how you show up in the world and how you you know, in a masculine, divine masculine way, operate with, with teaching and, and showing others how to heal themselves, essentially. How are you doing that? Wow. Well, a big part of it is me talking and sharing my story, you know, how I've walked through different moments in life where I've had to face something that wasn't so easy, uh, was challenging. And also, what was the result of that? What's the other side of that, you know, and how that then created this which created this which created this so it we're always modeling yes. in a sense. 
<laughs> whether it's clothes or anything, <laughs> we're modeling what's possible and whether or not someone chooses to see what's possible for them through our embodiment is the, is the, is that's the, that's the question. Yeah. Now, that's the thing that is out there to be, to be, uh, to be seen. And I truly believe that we are all responsible for being our own savior. Yeah. We're, we're only going to save our own selves by, by, by understanding that everything that we need is already in here. It's already packed, tightly woven <laughs> in place within ourselves. Yeah. And so I really feel like, you know, I, I play on this word there. And I may have talked to you. I can't remember if we ever, if I talked to, but the word there has here in it. Yes. So T here. So people are like, well, how do you get there? How do you achieve? How do you, how do you arrive? I'm like, well, just understand you're already there. You are already on the top of Mount Everest. You are already on top of the Himalayas or you're already in the ashram in India. That is just a reflection of what you already are. Yes. So sometimes we do need to take the physical external journey to go places for the master, for the yogi, for the shaman to say, hey, you already have it. Yep. And that's your enlightenment. How about that? Look at that. <laughs> you thought it was going to be studying under me and training under me, but no, right. you're already your master. Yep. So turn your searchlights in and you'll see that all the glory, all the magnificence, all the splendor that you look for is within you. And so that, and that's, and that's a beautiful dance because it's part of the doing, yes. but it's also realizing that the doing and being can be unified in a beautiful dance yes. together. You know, Another. I mean, <laughs> mic drop, like, like <laughs> it's just, it's true. Like we, people are, I feel like people are just afraid of knowing how powerful we truly are. And there's this, again, part of this resurgence of plant medicines never went away, but it's coming to the mainstream yep. therapeutic settings. And, and in yep. the limelight, you have guys like Mike Tyson and Joe Rogan and, and Tony Robbins that are really big Titans in their industries. And they're becoming enlightened and like all these things. And like you, you they have these big voices and pulpits to speak from. Will Smith just recently did a thing coming out. I think his bit, book, it might be called Will. If it's already out, I'm not sure. But he talks about an ayahuasca journey or multiple that he did for years. Wow. And like these people that are beautiful human beings in their own way, they're realizing that like these teacher plants and these tools, again, not just plant medicines, right? You have sweat lodge, you have meditation, you have journaling, you have friendship, you have all these different breath work, everything in between moving your body, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But all these different things that have been given to us are really just things that are, we already have within. They're just ways of looking out the window and seeing what's already there or looking at the window of your soul, right? Like looking, I see that I'm already a powerful creator. I'm a healer. I have all these things. And sometimes we just need that reminder. Yep. Rem remember who you are. Like, remember yep. who you are. You're, you're a spark of the divine. You're a spark of the creator. So that means that you can do amazing shit too. Yep. And it's not always yep. easy to remember that, especially in those times where you have self doubt or as, as entrepreneurs or people that, you know, work for ourselves, imposter syndrome creeps up, even if you're doing a good job and you're like, man, who am I to be able yeah. to do this and say this and tell people I can heal, well, not heal because that's not the right word, but like I, I've learned that I, my part of my journey is to facilitate healing, but I'm not healing anyone. I'm just sparking the, the knowing that people have this innate healing ability within themselves. And now they go out and they do their own healing and they, they like you said, share their story and all these other things. So before I get on a rant, because this shit's really exciting to me, um, thinking about your own healing process and thinking about, you know, the different modalities that you've played with and, 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 and where you operate today, where would you say, you know, like you operate now in terms of the tools that you use to continue your healing for yourself and for the other people that are in your life? Yeah. I mean, it's a constant, it's a constant engagement with these tools, you know, and, and different ones too, you know, some ones are, are more uh, practical, to use some of them or, or less in different instances you know yeah. sometimes just taking some deep breaths like in the space of meditation yeah sometimes it's um you know working out sometimes it's hiking sometimes it's not doing anything you know stillness. it's actually the, the stillness of everything so I, I i really just really get in tune or just tap into my intuitive energy like what's 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 my body telling me you know, what's, what's, what's readily coming up in, through my mind, you know, in the moment, you know, and I just trust it, you know, I think it's so important that we get to a space where, 
at least for me, that trust what's ever coming up is what you need. And if you if you doubt it, sit with it. Okay, cool. We, we have doubt sometimes. We have some like pause. Sit with it. And if it still keeps coming up, keep coming up. Maybe even ask somebody else. Ask someone close to you. You know, reach out. There's always ways that we can come to that, that center, that stillness. Yes. And so that's a tool in itself. Community. Community can be a tool, you know, and, and it can be a tool to help you figure out which, to, which other tool for yourself that you might want to maybe use for that moment or for that experience. So it, it's, yeah. a, it's a day-by-day thing. You know, I have accountability um, uh, mechanisms that I use. I have this one thing called the balance chart. And it's actually a, um, a, an app where there's seven building blocks or seven blocks of the word balance within it. So balance is a seven letter um, word and it deals with breath, aqua, which is water, lengthening, which is stretching and, and extending the body, uh, anaerobic, which is um, strength, strength training and conditioning, nutrition, cleansing and energize. So wow. all of those seven areas really constitute a, a well sustainable um, way of approaching different things in life. And it's, it's, it's flexible. It, it's, it's, it can be maneuvered in different ways. And it helps me to stay um, present with what's important or what do I need to keep in place yes. throughout the week, throughout the month, so that I stay closer to my center of life. Not always, this is not, this is not balance. Balance is just like the flow between, you know, your ebbs and flows. And it's just like having more of a balance, relatively speaking, to where you're closer to the to the center versus yeah. just being way out here and, and and oscillating so far left and right all the time, you know, which creates a lot of stress, anxiety, and just you know, dismantledness and, and diminishing diminished experiences. So um it, it's it's a it's a fun thing. It's it's a dance. And it's just like how no we question. dance <laughs> all around the dance floor and, and aesthetic dance. You're moving all around and we always usually find our way back to the center of the dance floor or where they where the most energy is. You yes. Know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Life is a beautiful dance, brother, in all the ways, every every way. And so, you know, you're really big into health and wellness in all the ways. And health and wellness, you know, as you know, is is not just the body, but it's mind body, spirit, emotional, everything. It's, 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 it's full spectrum. Yes. If you're really healthy and you're really working towards those things. And again, I'm a guy that grew up Italian and I like junk food. And so like, it's like an 80, 20 thing for me, or at least I, I try to operate around there. So, you know, 80% whole foods, single ingredient foods, natural foods, and then 20% is whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> so, and so I know that those, those come with it. It's part of being a human, you know, having this human experience. Mm-hmm. But, but because you're in this place and this is your, your zone of genius, sh- tell, tell us, you know, as listeners and viewers, how you're helping other folks, how you're guiding other folks. What is it? What are the tools that you're, you're in your business that you're embedding, you know, from, you know, is it workouts? Is it mindset? Is it, is it energy? Like talk about all of that you do and how you can take someone in a place in their life and help them move to the next place. Yeah, well, it's all those in a sense. You know, I offer personal life coaching that is really helping people just get, first of all, this more clarity. Like what's what do you what do you feel you need to have more clarity around? What do you need to get clear on? What what do you need to understand with more fullness? Is it what you believe? Is it what you value? Is it um, you know, what kind of roles you want to take on in life, which tie into certain goals? Yep. And what do you need do you need clarity around the impact of the environments that you're in me each and each and every day work family friends any of the environments in between those places and then like how does that facilitate this sense of conviction now it's like okay now i have clarity okay now i can feel this sense of conviction about what it is that i want to stand on what i what it is that i I want to uh how i want to live out you know, energetically. So that's, that ties into this thing of conviction. And once we are convicted on something because we have clarity, there's a sense of confidence yes. and courage that can come from that. And so with that, they'd be working out, you know, working out for whatever reasons to, to release stress, to, to shed some pounds, to just feel more confident, to feel more empowered physically, to feel stronger, which translates to other things too, because one thing is, one thing always changes 
t- connects to everything. Yes. I don't believe that like spirituality is physicality and physicality is spirituality. No question. It's all one. It's just how you relate or how you see it in the process of, of it all coming together. And so I work with people on a lot of different things. Um, and I also offer resources for other people too, for people that I work with so that they see that it's not just me as the coach or the trainer for them. I say, there's a we for, for, sure. for this whole thing. You might, I might suggest a therapist, a nutritional counselor, um, with a money mindset coach. Yes. Cause there's certain areas, you know, my own wheelhouse that I have strengths in where I feel really strong. And also where I know I'm not as, you know, on that level where I feel like they need to go or they might see themselves needing, you know, help in or counsel. And that's cool. Again, it takes a village, yes. a team, you know, all major brands, iconic people, <laughs> movements, organizations, all are built on foundational, sustainable teams yes. so that there's this like division of labor or division of a collective energy coming together to support the whole yes and so um i'm really big on just trying to help people have as much information and helping them have the awareness to where they have access to opportunities so that their wellness and health is always their biggest investment first everything else comes from there the baseline is your wellness and health because that's literally how you're going to experience everything else out. Yes. You yeah, know, but- because we can make millions, right? We can make thousands. There's a lot of blueprints on how to become a millionaire, a billionaire, a lot of things. And not everybody will, but at the same time, there isn't always this blueprint on how to, to feel nourished and feel as successful inside as you are with the money that you make. Is your health like the, the wealth that you attain outside. Do you, do you have a, a billion dollars worth of health in your body as well as a billion dollars outside of that? That's rare. That's more rare. There's a lot of people with health. They're robust. They got a six pack of financial ability. <laughs> but inside, there's like, oh yeah, I feel like I am broke. And it, 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 it's oftentimes it's modeled and, and, and um, oftentimes idolize that that's what the grind is yeah hustle porn hustle porn oh yeah, yeah. i mean we can get as much as i like gary v his, his he's changed his ways but he used to be like you know work to your eyes bleed now, yeah. now, he's, now, he's like, now he's mr balance he's like get the sleep he never used to talk like this he's like, i know sleep, right do the thing like he's changed so yeah. <laughs> and i think this since the pandemic i think that's what you know it, it has flipped it has reset it has flipped yes. the script yeah. literally yeah the, the script the scripting here so that people can rescript and reprogram because there was a programming going on <laughs> and there still is because it's, <laughs> it's still going on but now have you ever been to grade school that's the first iteration that we're aware of a programming get people ready to have someone stand in front of them tell them what they do for eight hours that was the industrial revolution yes jesus <laughs> yeah. and there's a there's a programming mechanism called television yeah oh my god yeah, they- television and there's a po- moment during some during networks where they you know they had the the colors they you know there's a pause and what was being shown on TV there's yes. like the, you know, the the rainbow colors and they and they say it right there they say we now interrupt your regularly scheduled program. program yeah programming they say programming they tell you Shit. we're programming it, it's so subtle I know because you don't you, you're just I'm doing I'm I'm just I'm just going and going I'm doing you don't think about it. But that's that's the sophistication of it. And it is it's, it's the nature of the beast. So. so so that's an interesting point that really hits home because uh, one of the most influential people in my life was my grandmother, Philly, Mary Tedisco. Her middle name is Phyllis. We call her Philly. Okay. Cute little old Italian lady used to always wear the like the house dress, never more unless she went out. Like she's just always cooking and doing her thing and amazing. I live with I got the experience and the and the, the ability to live with her. Uh, it was a great experience for a couple of years while I was in college. And she taught me so much. And, and, and one of the reasons why I really love elderly people is because of her and my relationship with her. And I really, I hit it off with them because I'm kind of like an old person in a way where I usually don't give a fuck. And like when, when you're in a, in a way, like in a, in, a, in a good way, like you don't take life too seriously. Like with people that are older, when they're in their seventies, eighties, nineties, they'll say whatever the fuck's on their mind with zero yeah. wonder if you care or not. And so uh, she used to always tell me, cause I'd come home after work or for college and 
later in the evening, she's like, you know, put on my program, put on my program. That's how she used to say it. Yeah. And what happens is, and this is really getting into like the science and brainwaves specifically is like, you start to slip into different brainwaves as you get closer to sleep mm -hmm. and the closer you get to sleep, the more suggestible you are. And so what happens is you're sitting there on your sofa or your couch or whatever the hell you're sitting. And then you start seeing these ads come in. You start seeing fear mongering come in. You start seeing all this programming that tells you how you should think and operate in the world without you even knowing about it. And it's so funny you brought that up because I've, I've talked about that before, that specific term programming, how they do that. And the flip side to this is since we now have this information and we know that there's thought leaders out there like Dr. Joe Dispenza and all these other people that are out there doing this beautiful work, you can take that power back. Yeah. It never left. You can own that power and you can get up in the morning. First thing you do, meditate. You're still in a different brainwave state. Call into your life what you want. It's not easy to do. Not everybody can do it every day, but do as much as you can and watch how your life changes. Watch yeah. the things that you can call into your life from relationships, abundance, health, abundance, health and wellness, whatever. But now that we know that we go into these different brainwave states and we're more suggestible the closer we get to sleep. And even while we're sleeping, throw on some binaural beats, throw on some different like uh, alchemizing type healing tones, whatever yeah. the hell you need to get into. But yeah. now that you know this, what are you going to do about it? It's like yeah. your industry completely like my industry, financial planning. It's like, you know what to do at some point. Now it's up to you to actually put in the work. You can bring the horse to water. Are they going to drink? Yes. That's the that's, question. That's, that's the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's, that's the, that's the, that's always the major fork in the road moment right there. Like you have the awareness. Now, what do you do with awareness or knowledge? Yes. I'm conscious now. Well, what does that mean? Does it mean that you apply it somehow? in some way to, to create a different outcome or experience. And um, it always goes back. We're always the master of our fate, captain of our soul. We're always, yeah. we're always the creators of what, what happens, what we create in the moment. And it's always coming back to that. Brother, yeah. you're a beautiful soul, man. What do, what do you have going on for the rest of 2021 before you close out the year or even beyond that you're looking forward to? It could be business. It could be personal. It could be bucket list stuff. Like what is it you want to do so that you don't die with regret? Man, well, one of the biggest things, aspirations right now is just to travel, oh, not, yeah. not just travel leisurely, but to travel with the, with the intention of, you know, um, facilitating events where there is this, there is a discussion around um, how do we bridge our wellness in, in more practical and effective ways within our communities? How, how do we really start to exercise vulnerability more, authenticity, um, integrity within ourselves how do we start to live with more conviction and clarity all the things i talked about earlier too and i see that in different formats through retreats through conferences through workshops um in different ways and I, what i'm really big on is the format of experiential learning which is like learning by doing like getting engaged moving the body yes um actually like having discussion you know because uh, human beings we're we are we are social people. We are so social beings just in general. And so I always feel like learn like you are. Like we're social. So learn in a social setting. Learn by having dialogue, yes, or yes. having conversation, having movement together, eating together, dancing together, like being with each other. Like that's the learning and yes. that's the connection and that's the healing. And that's all the, all the things all thrown into the pot that we all eat from, that we all gain from, that we all continue to expand and evolve from. So, um, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm leaning into with establishing opportunities for myself going into 2022 yes. and further beyond that too. And, um, and also just travel, like I said, just traveling and, you know, I was looking online um, the other day to see what, what are some of the travel requirements based on, you know, some of the situations that are yep. going on right now. And the places I'm looking to go to, it's actually, um, pretty easy for me to travel because um you know I'm, I'm not a vaccinated person and i don't plan on being same so um, there's and a lot of people, that, for are people that are vaccinated great but just give me yeah, the ability totally. to make the decision <laughs> yeah and, and yeah just even just you know minorly disclaim like i have no qualms with people who want to get vaccinated or don't it's same. i mean it's so much bigger than that i mean that's like a speck of dust yeah it, it, it as it relates to the matter of what's really out there you know so um, yeah, I just want to share that. 
Love it. So yeah, that's that's my big. Those are some of my big goals and, and big, aspira- big aspirations right now, man. I love it. That's a life well lived, brother. It seems like you're really, you know, you're in tune with yourself. You are being of service, which is a huge way to do this human existence. You're exploring curiously yourself, the world, others. And uh, I already know based on what you just said in that last two to three minutes that we're going to do some shit together. And whether it's journey in the world, whether it's retreats, whether it's uh, empowering people, having fun, playing, dancing, yeah. you know, we're going to definitely do some life, brother. So I want to be the first one from the audience to say thank you so much for being you. Thank, thank you, you for showing up powerfully, vulnerably, courageously. And brother, keep doing you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesse. All, All right, right man. Brother.